Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex. Michael's here with me. Yep. And we're doing just kind of a brief overview of the Trosin controller. There's a lot of these on the market and we're usually used to working with like Ruida stuff on Laser Everything. And you're coming from the Epilog world. Right. Uh, so this is pretty fresh for you, it right? Is. Yeah. It's super fresh. So we're just going to talk about some of the basic uses of the controller and, and some things that I really like about it. So the basic layout is pretty standard here. We've got just some basic movement keys. So if we want to move our laser head around, we can do that. One thing that you can do on this that's really kind of a pain in the butt to do on other controllers is you can change the jog speed. Yeah, and I really liked doing that the other day. Yeah, when I, we were working with very, the Ranger. It was very intuitive. Yeah. I was like, ah, there's the speed control for the jogging. Yeah, oh, and it like slows that. it down like a lot. Yeah. You can really pimp, but like getting those corners when you're trying to like frame stuff mm -hmm. uh, is really, really easy when you do it that way. And another thing you have really easy access to here is the origin button. So if you want to say your origin, it's right there. This whole thing's a touch screen. By the way, that you'll notice there's no physical buttons. They have to press, uh, or like get all like grimy and kind of gross. And of course we have our frame, they call it box here, uh, but you can go ahead and hit that and it'll do a quick frame for you as well. You have your X and Y coordinates. And you've got a status indicator here. So when you're idle or moving or running, it's always going to let you know what it's up to. The other cool thing about this is it's got Z axis support built in, which is really nice. So you're not switching axes. There's no weird kind of like rewiring or switches you need to do. It's literally one button. It's right up here in the top right corner and you're instantly in control. You'll notice we have access controls for U and Z. So of course Z is going to control that Z bed, right? So we're gonna raise that Z bed up and down, uh, which is incredibly easy. But you can also wire your rotary directly into this controller mm -hmm. and you don't need to swap. Like a lot of people swap the Y. Yeah, oh yeah, I know, I've seen it. The Y axis, I've it's, done it. it's a nightmare, dude. Yeah, it's just it another sucks. step uh, that you shouldn't have to do. This, it. you wire that axis right into the controller yep. and then you've got your U axis here. So yep. once you plug the rotary in, you can jog on the rotary just like that, super easy. And of course, for both of these settings, you still have that speed control as well. So you are gonna change the speed that you're moving through there, uh, which is really nice. This is also where you're gonna find your file menu. So if we hit file, you can see everything that's been uploaded to the machine, as well as the parameters that you've done. You can copy files off of the controller back on to a memory card right here yep which is really sick so it's right there if you had a job and you're like oh i didn't save this in lightburn oh yeah you know what i mean or yeah. like whatever you didn't save it in your laser software you can pull it back off the controller which is like really cool totally super duper useful and uh, of course you can clear your files here and we can also select a file so if we want to run this job again it's as easy as hitting select and you can see it comes back up here in our preview window which is really nice. In this param menu here, these are the params that were sent over with this job. And we can actually go in and change them, which is super duper easy. Uh, you just tap it and you can enter a new value. So you can change values on the fly once they're already on the controller, yep. which is super nice. Could you change it while the job is going? You can. You can also fire the laser here with the laser button, just like you would on any other controller. And you can uh, push a full reset too. So this will reset the entire controller and it'll rehome everything back to its original setting sure is but you also have the option of resetting just one axis if you want so you can reset just the xy or just the z if you need to just reset the z or your rotary if your rotary has homing which is Absolutely. nice too one other thing that i wanted to show you guys really quick is that you do have the option to continue previous work. So if you do have like a power failure or something, you can resume after that job I'm fails. Pretty sure none of my machines will do that. Yeah. I do in the spring and summer have regular power outages in Georgia. Yep. And it's always one of those things I'm worried about. I try not to start jobs in the middle of thunderstorms. Yep. Yep. <laughs> the Trosin also supports the autofocus. This machine that we're on right now doesn't have it, but if you're set up with a limit switch for your Z, it will autofocus itself. So, oh, nice. yep, which is really cool. In here, you can do a few extra things, like you can set your own origin. 
So if the machine is homing to like the rear right, you can have it set to the rear left or the front or the middle. This one is actually set to the middle. I don't know if you've noticed when we do a fresh restart, yeah. it centers to dead center. Yeah. It's just been set that way. So you can set that to wherever you want. And you can also set the manufacturer settings as well. I don't have the password to this machine actually, so I can't show you that right now. But normally you would have to go into Lightburn and go into machine settings and import those settings into Lightburn, edit them, and then rewrite them to the controller. These are all accessible right here inside of the controller itself, which is really cool too. Nice one, Trosen. Yep, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's very useful. And uh, that's about it, guys. Uh, there's not much else to show here as far as basic function, but the Trosen controller controllers, especially the AWC7813, which is the controller you're going to find on most of the machines that we've looked at during our time at Light Object to come with, is a really powerful controller that really simplifies integration with a bunch of different laser systems. Yeah, my favorite part is the interface. Yeah, the interface is great. I think it's pretty intuitive. It's very intuitive. Just this. Yep. I love this right here. That. Yep, that's amazing. So yeah, that's about all we have to say about this, guys. This controller ships standard with every light object machine except for the Saturn II, which has a more advanced Trosen controller, which is required because of the hybrid operation. Yeah. Because you're, you're cutting metal with that machine. So that one's a little different, but all of the other machines that you pick up from light object are going to ship with this Trosen controller standard. Of course, you're going to see Lightburn compatibility. We've been using Lightburn since we got here. Everything's worked great. So that's about it. Hope you guys got value out of this one. Smash the like button. Let everybody else know the content is good. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the LMA, masters.lasereverything.net. And uh, go check out Michael's channel, Laser Engraving 911. Thanks for hanging out, Michael. I hope, yeah. you, uh, hope you enjoyed this little controller tour. Yeah, that was actually really cool. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. And we will see you in the next one.